Today's video is a powerhouse video. Why? Because of these guys. This video is all about Swirsky mites and how these predatory mites allow you to create food in a natural environment without the use of any sprays to control some pretty devastating bugs in the garden. Stay tuned to learn all about the Swirsky mite. So I'm not sitting here under this beautiful green luscious arch because it looks pretty. Yeah, sure, it does. It looks amazing. But I'm sitting here because this specific arch is infested with red spider mites. I'll tag it up for you at the top here so you can have access to the video that I did on red spider mites. The techniques that I showed in that video are very effective and they work. However, what they need is constant application, weekly cycles until it's gone. And with my busy city life, urban environments, it's just there isn't enough time to be able to give so much attention to one specific plant. But many people do have the time to do that and if you can do that, it works really well. However, it also involves a weekly application of neem oil, which costs money and also does impact the ecosystem that you have in place. So an alternative to soapy spray to get rid of all the initial ones and then neem as a regular application to keep them away is the Swirsky mite. So this is a predatory mite that feeds on arthropods. I didn't know that name, I had to look it up and I still don't know if I'm even pronouncing it right. But anyway, in this family of pests include mites such as red spider mite which I'm struggling with, broad mites, white fly and thripes. Those are pretty big pests in the garden. They can be difficult to get rid of. A lot of them require regular applications of sprays and things like that, which, as you know, can end up costing quite a lot. The Swirsky mite, that's their supper, breakfast, lunch, and everything in between. That's what they want to eat. So it is a great, great natural predatory mite that is able to infiltrate your garden live off the pests, soft-bodied insects. And how they do that is they actually sting them and then suck out the sap. So they're incredibly effective at getting through large populations of infestations of you know, either white fly larva, um, thripes, or a range of, of mites. As they start to infiltrate your, your garden, how they start reproducing is they lay eggs on the underside of the leaves. When you have predatory insects in your garden, it's incredibly important that you do not use any sprays. You don't want to be doing soapy mix sprays, any organic insecticides, neem oil, nothing like that. Because what you're going to do is you're going to spend money and as soon as they start growing and expanding and infiltrating your garden, if you are going to spray, you're just going to wipe them out. Or opposite effect, you're going to actually wipe out all of their food and in turn you're going to start lowering their numbers. What makes Swirsky mites so amazing is compared to many of the other predatory insects they can actually survive and thrive and keep populating without their primary food source. So without mites, thripes, white fly larva they can actually still continue to thrive and how they do that is they can live off the pollen of many different types of plants and they also eat the nectar in many different types of flowers. So if you have a balanced, healthy ecosystem with flowers, with nectar, with beneficial insects, with everything going for it, these little mites should, in essence, if you have the correct climate, live forever. You should technically only need to buy them once and they should always be in the garden somewhere. And then as soon as their food has disappeared, which is the bugs, they will then continue to, to be around in the garden. If you then have an infestation of red spider mite or you get attacked by a white fly, then you know that somewhere in the garden you have these little hidden armies of mites that are ready to just pounce. So it's a really great way. But like I said, if you're going this route, you need to go this route and you need to commit. You can't then start using sprays for other thing because then you're going to wipe out the mites and then you're going to get infestations of things that you just try to get rid of. 
So it's a, it's a catch-22, it's a road that you need to decide to go down on and once you go down you need to use nature, ecosystem balance and let it do its thing. There is a term called diapause which means that the insect doesn't go through a natural cycle of hibernation or redu reduction in reproduction. The Swirsky mite doesn't do that given that the temperatures are correct. And what are those temperatures? Pretty much an, an average daytime temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. If you have that, you have the perfect environment for the Swirsky mite to thrive year long, which is pretty much the case in the southern part of South Africa and, and along the coast. If you are more inland where you get pretty severe winter frosts and freezes, you're probably going to struggle a bit with the, the population size during winter. But that being said, if you can create a little ecosystem with beans or something that's prone to a specific insect like the red spider mite, you have some flowers with some pollen, something preferably with nectar that they can actually survive on when the mites are gone, you could always grow that in a pot and bring it indoors in winter so that there is some coverage from the direct cold which then at least you have a little system going where your mites can survive and then in summer bring it out again. That being said, in South Africa, pretty much across the whole of the country, our daytime temperatures never really go or stay really low. So in South Africa, it's a pretty good option to have these predatory mites in the garden because they could thrive year long. So now the part a lot of you have probably been waiting for. How do you spread the Swirsky mite into the garden and get them doing what they need to do? Well, there are two different options to consider based on your needs. Firstly, you have this option, which I have chosen, which I'm holding in my hand. And these are live mites in vermiculite that you sprinkle throughout your garden and at the base of plants, and they immediately start doing what they need to do. Your second option is a slow release sachet, which then you hang in some of the infected areas it's filled with food. As the food inside the sachet is consumed, the Swirsky mite then starts climbing out a little hole at the top and then starts infiltrating your garden. Let's go through the, the two options so that you can decide which one is better for you. First off, the, the live mites that you actually spread. So an important thing to note with this one is it's immediate. What I mean by that is if I'm looking at the arch that I'm sitting under, which is infested with red spider mites on the beans, I need to get onto this as soon as possible. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sprinkle from the top very lightly some, some Swirsky mites onto the leaves, and I'm also gonna put a few of them at the base of the plant. What's gonna happen is the mites are gonna get attached to the leaves and the base, and they can immediately then start infiltrating the plant and start attacking. What this allows me to do is get immediate control into the entire garden. If you have an infestation in one part, you more than likely have mites in different areas as well. Here in Cape Town, it's pretty much down to the wind. These mites travel with the strong southeasters that we have, so you're always gonna have issues with them and they can be hard to eradicate. And if you have some here, it's almost guaranteed you're gonna have some there. So something like this is a great option because you can sprinkle it throughout the garden and you can get a really, really good coverage. Now, if we look at the slow release sachet, that is a great option if you know that you have an isolated issue and it's still sm pretty small, you don't have an infestation. And why I say that is you can hang it, the little sachet, wherever you, you, you need to. And then as those mites emerge, they then travel along and then start consuming. Where you don't want to be using the sachets is where you have widespread coverage of a specific pest because you're going to have to buy a whole bunch of sachets and spread them all over to be able to get quick results. And the difference is cost. These 25,000 mites are 500 rand. Now if we look at the equivalent in sachets, 500 rand is not going to get you a garden full of coverage. It's also not going to get you very far when you look at neem oil as, a, as an option. 
On the flip side, you do not want to buy 25,000 mites, which from this specific supplier is the minimum quantity. If you have a very, very small area or you have quite a small garden or area of veg that you're actually growing. So if you have a couple of raised beds and you have an issue, then the sachet is a brilliant option because you can hang it in your raised beds and the mites will do their thing. You don't need 25,000 mites in a couple of raised beds. But in a garden like this, with a food forest down there, I need something larger scale. So something like this is the best option for me. And now you know your two options, how to use them, how to apply them. What, you, what I'm gonna do with this now is sprinkle it on the plants that actually have infestation. And then I'm going to sprinkle this at the base of the other plants that don't have infestation, but that I know are prone to red spider mites, like brinjals, cucumbers, beans, and pumpkins, squash. They're all very prone to red spider mite. So even though most of them don't have it's only my beans at this stage, I'm still going to sprinkle this at the base of all of those plants so the Swirsky mite can make its way up. It'll feed on the pollen of most of those plants. So if there aren't bugs, there is still food for it. So there you go. I hope this has been an informative video for you. I've done as much research as I can to make sure this is informative for you to be able to make a decision whether you're going to use it or not, which one to use. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and spread it out to your communities so we can help people give more, get more options when it comes to growing more naturally in the, in the household and urban environment. If you've got any questions, please drop them below. If I don't know the answer to them, I will definitely reach out to the supplier that I got these from. They're incredibly knowledgeable about predatory insects and bugs. And then when it comes to my journey and things that I'm doing and constantly changing, please subscribe to this channel. I'm gonna cover everything I do. I'm gonna share it with you. Whether it works or whether it's not, you'll know about it. It's not a channel about success and showing off. It's a channel about growing together and learning and developing as a community. Until next time, happy growing.